Hi everyone, welcome. What you see here is one of those uh, imitation artificial Christmas trees that actually has all the lights built right in. So you fold the thing up, put it away, and when the time comes to put it up and celebrate Christmas, it's all set to go. Just plug it in and there's lights. But in this case, the lights all blew out. <laughs> Last year, gradually, it started out with the lights burning out up high and then all the way down to the bottom and eventually it was just dark. So, to solve that problem, it was really just a matter of going out and buying a few boxes of Christmas lights. So, each box had a hundred and there were ten boxes. So, you could see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So, there's nine hundred lights here because each box had a hundred string of hundred lights but where's that last 100 lights you might be asking well they're sitting right here underneath these little pieces of wood the Christmas lights have been positioned underneath these plastic containers the plastic containers are what I refer to as my cocoon nurseries so that's where that last box of Christmas lights got positioned they're keeping these boxes of cocoons at this point warm the worms themselves had been moved out, so the castings were assumed to have a bunch of cocoons remaining in them. So I, um, I decided I would try to keep them warm since it's winter time, and I wanted to try to optimize the conditions in which these cocoons were left to hatch and produce their young. So now I guess I've kind of given this this uh, long-winded name of the European Nightcrawler Cocoon Incubation Experiment Termination event <laughs> today. So this goes back a month and a half at this point, you know. Um, 45 days was when I had set up the, the warming rack and this 68 day cocoon nursery has been on that warming rack ever since I built the warming rack. A few days later came a, um, the 43 day old cocoon nursery which um, sat around for a couple days and then eventually I made room on the rack for that to join in. So they've, they've both been um, being warmed for over 40 days each and it was over here 20 days ago that we did a quick haul out, just a quick recap of what the viewers thought they saw in that video. I got three suggestions that we had um, collected 150 worms or 60 worms or 200 worms, which averages 136. So whether we've got that many on this go around, I don't know, but this will be the last of it. There was also a little survey conducted to ask, hey, where should we put these worms that we collect? And only one person complied with the rule of picking one of the three yellow uh, buckets that I've got. There were a couple people that seemed to think I should take whatever worms we collect and split it three ways and launch them into three sets. I really wasn't looking to do all that. So, the one person that did suggest um, one of the yellow bins um, asked that we put the worms into bucket number three because that was the one that seemed to have the fewest. So that's what I'm going to be doing. And that actually... Um, that actually matches my um, best estimate for which of the three buckets has the fewest worms in it too. So I'm going to go unplug that warming rack now, bring it to an end, and we're going to go do a haul out of the worms, see how many we can collect on this go around. So now this is the 68 day old one and it's got this kind of weird sloped setup. I mean I did, I did it that way so that I can sort of consolidate the material in here so that it's not spread out so much. Um, ideally resulting in a limit, limited amount of moisture loss due to evaporation. And after almost three weeks of not even looking in on these, I'm glad to see that there's some moisture that seems to be collecting here under the plastic and, wow, nice and damp. And a good number of what appears to be fresh castings out here on the top too. So now I guess we're going to have to be careful so we don't leave anyone behind. The whole idea here is to free this batch of finished castings of any remaining inhabitants. So there was one here, little guy squirrel, squirmed aside, so I guess it would make sense to try to be quick about it, not give these little guys an opportunity to dive down and get out of reach. But you can see this piece of banana was part of our strategy to, to round up worms. I thought there was another one here too, right? I looked away for just a moment and then kind of lost track of I'm going to excavate here, I guess. Um, this piece of leftover banana can go with them. Maybe we'll just stick it right here in the middle so they got a little something to hide under from these bright lights. Kind of nice. So many castings. Just seems like the product of what would probably be a good number of worms. 
So when I see that many castings, I don't expect that I'm only going to find two or three worms. It seems like that's the castings that would have been left behind by a fairly good number of worms. But I mean, three weeks later, it could be... I don't know. It's hard to say. I've not really done a lot of these cocoon nurseries. So I'm still sort of just getting my feet wet. But I mean, like one thing I just saw a moment ago before I brushed it aside... I do feel like I'm seeing, like right here, for example, appears to be a um, cocoon. I'm not sure if it's visible, but it's pretty dark in color, suggesting that it uh, has yet to hatch. And it's right in the middle of this really nice damp castings material. It's really beautiful stuff. Maybe even a little more damp than we would want it to be. Although it does seem so crumbly and breakaway that it seems like it could easily sift if we wanted it to but I don't think that that's in the game plan here today it's really like here too I'm seeing I thought I saw a cocoon I thought I had it in my fingertips but it dropped I'm not really going out of my way to see them but it does seem like maybe they're just really visible amongst the the castings you know I keep seeing cocoons and I just wonder if it's premature to bring this experiment to an end. I mean, after all this time, you know, it just seems like we've given ample time for this to play out. And, you know, I mean, these couple worms here, you know, could they be the ones responsible for continuing to deposit additional cocoons into the system? I suppose that's always possible, too. All right, so I've got some paper here that's awfully dry. Maybe I'll just set that aside and we'll use that somewhere else in the future as bedding. It's not really serving much purpose here. So, I don't know, I guess just a quick, down here, super dry. We're not going to find any worms in here, that's for sure. But perhaps if we bring over a lot of this super damp stuff and cover up the really dry stuff, it'll sort of rehydrate and bring it back to being normal again. Down here at the very, very bottom, I could feel a good amount of moisture. And it's weird too, like right here in the smack in the middle is a, a pile of super dry castings, which I didn't expect that it would be able to crumble like that. Here's a couple more. Usually when you got castings that have dried, they dry into like this super hard block and then they don't break apart very easily. But maybe the way these dried somehow they managed to um, maintain their really nice crumbly texture. So all I'm really doing here is sort of bringing over this damp stuff while at the same time combining it with some of the really dry stuff I'm finding at the very bottom. I just don't understand how the really dry stuff at the bottom could get dry covered by damp stuff. <laughs> Strange. I guess just the, the force of the warmth must be driving the moisture to evaporate, evaporate, evaporate and up, 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 away from the heat source up to the top areas where it's not quite as warm and then and then it manages to just condense and remain up in the upper sections I guess that would also sort of drive any worm inhabitants upwards too as the material down low starts to dry out and I think after we combine all this dry stuff with the nice damp stuff it's going to really all have a nice pretty much perfect consistency i can imagine maybe running this stuff through a a screen to get rid of some of these little stems and stuff but it wouldn't even really be necessary it seems it's really nice stuff so i bet you a lot of you have already probably spotted at least a, a few worms that i just completely breezed right by while i was kind of admiring these beautiful castings <laughs> But I don't think we're gonna find them anymore. Oh, right when I about to, right when I was about to say that, I unearthed one more little guy. But I don't know. I think I see another one over here. Yeah, you know, we might find just a few more all the way on this far edge that was covered up nicely. This seems to be the spot where we're gonna round up the last few worms here. And I mean, you know, if any worms were to remain in this stuff, it, the stuff will be kept damp. You know, I won't allow it to continue drying. Um, when I put it into storage it'll be covered up well enough that it manages to maintain a good amount of its 
moisture so that if any worms do remain behind, and I got a feeling there will be because I, I just keep bumping into cocoons. Here's another one on the tip of my index finger. And, and it being kind of light in color suggests to me that it's um, got a ways to go before it could hatch. I suppose it makes sense just to keep it with the worms now and release it into the worm system. Oops. <laughs> when we release these little guys. But I think we've pretty much um, succeeded in rounding up all the last of the worms. We did a, I think a lot of these little guys gotta be, you know, still juveniles born here, possibly thanks to the additional warmth that we added. See here too, it's just, I, I thought I saw a cocoon a moment ago. It had sort of that medium kind of color to it. Not too light, not too dark. Again, suggesting that it might have some time to go before it could hatch. Geez, here too. I'm starting to wonder if I'm making a mistake here by taking these castings off the warming rack because there are what seems to be a good number of cocoons in here still that might might still produce something. I don't know. I don't know. It does seem like this is something that I've never done before or at least not to this extent. I mean I have gone through what I in the past had referred to as sort of a finishing phase where the material was just sort of left to continue on even after the last of the worms had been moved out and relocated and launched off into new systems and stuff and more recently I've kind of refined that thinking to be more specific so it's not just a generic finishing phase it becomes sort of a nursery phase kind of um, better specifies what we're trying to target which is just the hatching of the cocoons in the material and applying the right conditions to promote that and man this stuff is really so nice I keep seeing stuff that I think <laughs> cocoons but I'm rifling through the material so quickly that I'm not really giving myself a chance to take a closer look and that's probably all for the better because I don't want to keep kind of floundering you know going back and forth I believe that after all this time if we still end up with a few baby worms in here, that's fine. At some point in the future, this stuff will go to good use out in the garden. And then those little worms will um, have a new job. And that'll be to enrich my garden soil outside. So that was kind of fun. I believe I took a, a little bit more time on that than I anticipated that I would. But I'm going uh, to cover this up. Because right now I don't really have a bucket into which I can place all this stuff to keep it from drying further or to be stored. But I do want to get these bus boxes back into service as worm bins, not just sitting around as um, castings storage. <laughs> so I'm going to have to round up a few more buckets to store my castings in. So let's go grab that other tub and then we'll be done. All right, so now maybe we could pick up the pace a little bit now that we kind of know what to expect and we've got sort of a little bit of muscle memory to support what we're trying to do here. We'll just sort of repeat the same thing here. Round up whatever worms we can. Get them in with the rest, rest of the recruits. And then we can really start considering these containers here as being nothing more than just some stored castings. All right, I think we got everybody off of the plastic. Alrighty. So let's get right to collecting these couple guys before they vanish out of view. I guess some of these coverings are going to be potential places to find worms. But I guess it would kind of, uh, I don't know, I was, I was sort of keeping all that dry paper that was sort of attached to that other container with that container. We could use that as bedding at some point in the future. I'm just hoping we don't end up leaving worms behind on any of this material. If we do that, if we leave it behind and let it dry out a little bit, it could become dangerous for the worms to be in. So, I don't know, whatever. Let's just do a quick quick check of the, um, the folds of the cardboard. Usually a place where you would find a good number of worms, but... Maybe in this case, the stuff had gotten just a little bit too dry for them to want to be there. Here we've got other large chunks of cardboard. Perhaps um, at some point in the near future, when I work on one of my European Nightcrawler systems, 
I could uh, include all of this stuff as bedding. Maybe I'll do just that. Maybe I'll just go ahead and put all these things in somewhere where it makes sense for it to be, which is someplace where there are supposed to be European night crawlers. I suppose that could even be my mixed population. So now I'm wondering if here we're going to need to just bring a bunch of this material over. This would be another banana peel, I believe. This is the stem. So we'll give that to them again, another large chunk to hide beneath. But here I seem to, I don't know, see a lot more worms. Maybe that other system, since it was around for a much longer period of time as a cocoon nursery, might have already had a large number of its babies born and big enough to be rounded up 20 days ago when we did the first haul out. Maybe here, this one's just catching up with the, you know, maybe with the worms that could have been just too small to get rounded up previously, now big enough to come up for the moisture, come up for the banana, and get rounded up now. It does seem like there's a good number of worms in this material. Um, I feel like I'm having a hard time picking them off. I don't feel like I've got a good technique. <laughs> These are all tiny little worms, too. So, I mean, if we tried this a couple weeks ago, we probably wouldn't even see them. They're so small. So it did seem to me like part of the um, equation did include not only leaving time for the cocoons to hatch, but the worms to become large enough to be easily seen, easily caught. And I don't know exactly how long that takes. You know, I can't, usually I can't just look at a worm and judge its age just based on its appearance or its size. But I mean, you could tell just from looking at these worms that I'm collecting that they are quite small in size. All of them babies for sure. I thought somehow, I don't know, to me, it seemed like we had much more going on over here a moment ago, but maybe I've already succeeded in picking a large number of them off. Here again, I feel like I'm bumping into what appear to be cocoons in here, stuff that might continue to yield babies if we were to let it. This little guy just went rolling over the edge. I guess we'll just have to maybe do a similar sort of scan across the material here. Perhaps once again helping some of this drier stuff that managed to almost dry completely at this point. Pretty much dry completely as a result of being warmed and not agitated. So that definitely reduces the amount of real estate that these little guys could have wandered into or been left in. Although sometimes it seems so weird that they're right there on the edge of the dry stuff. I could have bought them over with some of the wet stuff that crumbled down too. So. I'd hate to strand any of these little guys in this harsh, dry stuff, but I'll, I'll kind of blend it all together towards the end so there's nothing that's this dry, actually. We'll take all the more damp stuff on the top, combine it with all this really dried out stuff on the bottom. And then if there are babies left behind or any more hatching to happen in here, it'll, um, it won't be a dangerous place for the worms to be in. It'll just be some nice castings. Might be a little lonely because <laughs> we will have already taken away all the cousins and brothers and sisters and relatives at this point. So it does seem like we're collecting a good number of worms here. I don't know if we're maybe being a little bit more thorough this time than we were last time. I, I sort of just skimmed through the video of the last ex extraction of worms from this system. And it did seem to me like it was a, a much more um, quick and dirty kind of scoop out of the baiting area and restoration of the um, setup to let it continue. It wasn't really trying so hard to be precise because there was always that thinking that, hey, we've always got next time, which is now. But now next time being now also being the last time, I guess I'm just trying to be a little bit more thorough so I don't leave too many wormies behind. Although I'm pretty sure we are going to end up leaving a good number of them behind. I guess in the future I might um, try not to let this happen so much. Although, you know, I guess there's really no um, tragic harm in letting some of these lower castings right near the, the heat source dry. 
because that really um, sort of restricts the movement of the worms to only the damp stuff above, kind of making it a little bit easier to round them up in the end. Since they're not going to be all over the place, they're only going to be in the damp, uh, cool material as opposed to the, um, the dried out, harsh stuff, the inhospitable stuff. I'm definitely, um, I feel, <laughs> I don't know why, it just feels to me like we're breezing right by a bunch of worms in here. And I'm wondering if I should do what I did in another of my um, couple systems where I had pretty much written the system off as complete and that the last of the haul outs had been done already, but still going ahead and just placing one last little um, piece of bait out on the top surface covered with plastic to allow moisture to recirculate there and potentially round up a couple more worms. I did that with my my African night crawlers recently. I pretty much bought an end to the system and then I just set out a little bit of bait on the top surface and then the next time we came back we did actually round up a couple more and then at that point we called it a done deal. And I could certainly see coming back down here with a couple pieces of yummy food to try to round up a couple last little European night crawlers that didn't um, get rounded up on this final haul out. Oops. Some of these are a little bit larger. They, they appear to be um, perhaps beyond the juvenile age. They look like they've got that, that little bulge on their bodies that indicates that they've reached um, you know, mating age or sexual maturity. It does seem like we're collecting a good number of worms here too, which is kind of cool. I guess I had sort of lost a little bit of confidence in our ability to keep pulling worms out of systems like these. Because it just seems like maybe I didn't manage them as well as these two. But these two seem like the material is just right. The conditions with the warmth seem to have been just right. The amount of moisture in the material that does have moisture in it, though, is also quite abundant. I mean, right here is <laughs> usually the, um, the best endorsement is worms actually mating right there in front of you, indicating that, hey, they're happy, you know, they're content in this material, so much so that they're reproducing although I don't know maybe the opposite end of the thinking could be more accurate that says hey food supplies are low things are drying out maybe we need to make some cocoons just in case we don't make it at least the next generation will survive so I don't even know how to interpret mating as being a sign of good or a sign of bad or maybe equally both maybe worms just don't care <laughs> all right this is just too much fun right I mean Sometimes I take a, a job that probably could get done in a few minutes and I stretch it out and stretch it out and prolong it and prolong it. But when it comes to this sort of stuff, you just, um, I guess, number one, you just enjoy looking at how nice the material is that they've created for you. Castings are quite beautiful. Even when they're quite damp, they crumble real readily. Even when they're very dry, they crumble real, real readily, which also seemed a little weird to me. To me, dry castings always seems to be um, something that just is almost like a you know rock, rock hard stuff when the stuff dries. But I guess maybe if it dries in a certain way, perhaps nice and slowly or something, or if it's encapsulated with moist material or whatever the case is, the the dry castings in this case were able to crumble quite readily, which was kind of neat. So I don't know. What do you think? How many worms did we leave behind? <laughs> And will they mind? I don't think they will if they're, you know, if they're still back in this stuff. Stuff's got a good amount of moisture to it. There's probably a good amount of um, remaining food in here that they could nibble on if they need to. Okay. At this point, I'm going to consider this as a done deal. Here too, I'm just going to continue stacking all this material up on top of itself. Hopefully, um, mixing in some of this more dry material with some of the the damp stuff that was up top helping to equalize the moisture level in here help some of this pretty dry material rehydrate not that it really matters so much because at this point theoretically we've depopulated the container so it wouldn't really be that tragic if this material were to continue to dry a little further Especially knowing castings, the castings right at the middle of this pile are going to um, be able to retain their moisture quite nicely if we cover up with plastic. And if a little bit 
here and there on the edges continues to dry then shouldn't be too tragic all right that's it that makes it official we're now closing down all of my active cocoon nurseries that I had and these were the last two these European night crawler systems uh, one of the night crawler systems this one the younger one uh, is the one where we had taken the ENCs and launched off our three yellow buckets and it was one of those three yellow buckets that we had wanted to nominate as the recipient of these worms that we had collected and we wanted it to be um, targeted so that the the yellow bucket with the fewest number of worms in it would receive um, this little injection of additional worms so here again I'm always just curious to see what people think how many worms did we pull together here did anybody happen to count them one by one during the entire video <laughs> I know I didn't but we're gonna release these little guys into bucket number three which in my observation two seemed to be the least populated one and then um and then this cardboard here you know I'm wondering where to put that besides the um besides the yellow buckets the other ENCs from the other container were used to uh, launch off just another vanilla worm bin I'm wondering if that's the best place to put all this stuff that's where this stuff might get the best use or maybe we could just put it into bucket number three along with the worms and we'll use it in the next feeding of that system and um, then we can all you know kind of keep the bedding material with the worms and keep everything together all right let's get this out of here too as you can see my collection of castings is beginning to pile up and I've even got more in buckets so I really got to get some more buckets down here and make a little bit more room for this stuff but before we can really consider these as officially no longer running worm bins we first need to make it official in terms of just turning the labels upside down and then we can know for sure that there's no longer any more worm composting going on here these are just containers that are <laughs> oops <laughs> storing uh storing castings oh my goodness i guess there was two labels there all right let's move on to releasing our baby worms here we are bucket number three time to release the euros so I'll just have to remind myself when we come back in here to feed these buckets again the next time that I've got all this spare cardboard and bedding type material that we could repurpose down here within these buckets. I guess we could just use it as sort of um, perhaps bedding for the next feeding or something. I'm not even sure how to position it so that it's not in the way. <laughs> this piece of... Um, coffee filter here is just indicating to us where the last feeding went in a few days ago it wasn't even that long ago that we fed these guys but let's get the task at hand complete so we can call it a day here not much of a worm release we're just going to give these little guys a chance to settle into their new home here and then we'll be done hasta la vista cocoon nurseries All right, so I've left this um, for a few minutes, just enough time for me to go rinse off the little plastic container that we collected the worms into and rinse off my glove a little bit. But I'm going to have to get a little bit dirty here handling this stuff just a little bit more before we call it a day. So whatever, this is going to cause a little bit of airflow over here by leaving this in here. But that should be okay. Maybe I'll spread it out in such a way that it kind of blocks this edge from allowing too much air in and then... And maybe our little paper and cardboard coverings can continue to do a pretty good job of keeping the moisture down in here. Um, usually I've got plastic in my systems to keep the moisture from evaporating too quickly, but it seems like this, um, this combo of paper and cardboard is doing a pretty good job in here. But that's pretty much it for today's um, little job on getting our cocoon nurseries wrapped up and put away so I've got even gone ahead while I was uh, waiting for those worms to slither away to remove all the stuff from the bench <laughs> I've got so much more table space now it's nice um, but that's it for today's video hopefully you enjoyed it if you did as always please don't forget to leave me a quick thumbs up before you go that's always really appreciated 
you haven't done so already, please also consider subscribing to the channel too. That's really appreciated as well. All right, everyone, have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye now.